My name is Louise Morse, and I am a charter member of the Westlake United Methodist Church. I was living in Westlake Hills when the church started. And the first, I, rem I don't remember a whole lot about it. It's like 40 or 45 years ago. One day, someone called me from a Methodist organization somewhere and said that the people out here wanted to have an organizational meeting and they were going to have it in someone's home. And I can't remember the name of the home, but uh, I was invited. And I thought about it and thought about it. And I decided that, uh, that I probably didn't want to get that involved because of my sexual orientation. I really did want to have a church and I really did want to be involved in it, but I decided to step back for the good of the church. And that's what I did. So for 42 years, I guess it is, I've been a member of that church, but I had to keep my identity hidden because I felt, and I didn't feel like it. I knew that there were people there that would object to uh, gay people coming to that church. And it, it was prevalent in society at that time, but I also, when you're, when you're a gay person and people don't know you are, <laughs> you hear a lot of things said. <laughs> but I liked the music in church, and, um, and I liked sermons in church, and I liked to pray in church. And those were the reasons that I went to church there. And when all of that was over, I was pretty much out of there. I never did join a Sunday school class or anything like that. So uh, that went on for about 40 years. And then all of a sudden, I heard about the Journeys class. Someone in the Journeys class had seen me at what we call the Black Tie Dinner in Austin. I was the co-chair of a Black Tie Dinner one year that's predominantly for gay people. And it's, about, it's held in a hotel downtown, and there are five or 600 people go, and all the politicians go, of course. And so I thought, uh-oh, I've been outed. And it was Marina. And so ever since then, she's invited me to come to the journeys class. And of course, I knew that she had figured out that I was gay. And finally, I did start going to the journeys class. And it has been a real liberating experience for me to be around people who understand me and they don't care in the first place. They have, and I've been more than welcome. Most of the people who object to uh, people that have of a different sexual orientation simply do not understand. And the two primary reasons that I can figure out that they object to it so much is, one, they think that uh, homosexuality is environmental, and it isn't. And they think it's a choice, and it isn't. And I want to talk about the uh, environmental part first because in my... In, my environment, it was definitely not what caused my sexuality, and neither is it anyone else's that I've ever known. I had a sister a year and a half older than me, and um, we were exactly alike. Everything I, everything she did, I did, or I was going to die trying. And and every time my mother talked to one of us, she talked to the other. We were we were just very very close. We wore the same clothes, I wore the same size, and she wore my clothes and I wore her clothes, and we'd swap out, and that way we had more clothes. And um, we ate the same food, we had the same parents, we lived the same place, we went to the same school, we went to the same church, we had the same brothers, we did the same work, we lived in the same bedroom. There was absolutely no difference in us, in the environment that we lived in. But when she got to be about 13 or 14 years old, she started wanting to date boys. And already I knew that, that, I, that I wasn't going to do that. If I hadn't already known what was wrong with me, I was told all the time. I heard about homosexuals, and I didn't, I didn't know what homosexual was. I knew how I felt, but I didn't know what it meant. Because people where I came from didn't talk about stuff like that, and neither did they talk about it in church. And I'd never heard anything about what the Bible any of the what, what we call clobber verses in the Bible about homosexuality. And then when I heard the word queer, I th it just absolutely frightened me to death. I thought, that's me. And so it scared me. And, um, and I started trying to sort it all out in my mind. And, and I dated guys. Uh, and I thought, I'll just change myself. And I changed my thought processes. And, I, and fortunately, you, there was no such thing as premarital sex then, so I could date all the time and didn't have that work to worry about. 
and I would try to make myself be attracted to men. I tried everything that I could think of, and, and as a last resort, I thought, well, I'll just get married. And so I did, and of course that was a disaster. And then is when I found out for the first time, and I'm sure other people found out earlier than I did, that the Bible talks about gay people in an unfavorable way. And uh, the word that hit me the worst is that I was an abomination to God. And then the natural thing to think that you come to after that is, well, that's what's wrong with me. That's why I've got all these problems. God is punishing me. And so you're in a, living in a position that you can't change, or you certainly would have, and, and God's punishing you, and you can't handle that either. So you get panic attacks. I thought, I just cannot handle this anymore. So I had a, a intervention with God, and then after that moment forward, I knew that God loved me. Something happened and that God did not care. And it enabled me to begin to get my brain straightened out and get my life started again. And it took quite some time, but the panic stop, stopped. And, and, um, and then I was able to kind of, uh, I actually started enjoying going to church, even though I still had my life hidden. And I hope that, I think that most people now realize that it isn't a choice because there's enough evidence around everywhere that they should be able to see that it's not a choice. But then there are people that say, well, if it's not environmental and if it's not a choice, at least you don't have to act on it. And so I think that the only person that could possibly say something like that would be someone who has never, ever in their whole life experienced love of loving someone. It is, that's one, I, th I think that's probably one of the strongest emotions that God gave us, is to be able to love somebody. It's all consuming. It's, and it's, it's your whole life and everything you want. It's demanding, you cannot resist it. And they must have never experienced that and having someone love them. Because you just can't, you cannot just say, well, I'm just not gonna love somebody. I suppose you could, turn and walk away, but what you had left would be nothing but a shell of what you could have been if you hadn't, because you've left your whole heart and your whole soul, your whole life behind you. It is so diverse what people think about what's said in the Bible, but my own conclusion is that I'm okay with God right now. At one time, I was asking God to take my mind or my life or whatever God wanted. I was just through, but it did not happen. And, um, and my life is much better now.